Welcome back everyone. Let's now discuss string formatting for printing. Often, you're going to want to be able to inject a variable into your string for printing. So we already learned about concatenation. For example, you may have a variable called my name equal to Jose, and you want to print the phrase, hello Jose. So what you may end up doing is say print, and then inside of that print function you say hello and concatenate it with the my name variable. Now there's actually multiple ways to format strings for printing variables in them, so you don't have to constantly be using this concatenation or plus sign. And this, in general, is known as string interpolation, which is basically just a really fancy way of saying stick a variable into a string. So we're going to explore two methods for doing this. One is the dot format method, and the other one is the fstrings method, which stands for formatted string literals. And this is a newer method for some newer versions of Python 3. I personally prefer the dot format method, but let's go ahead and show you both of them and you can decide which is more your style. Let's get started. Okay, let's begin by discussing the dot format method. And the basic syntax for this is you're going to have your string defined and then inside of your string, you're going to have special curly braces as placeholders for the variables you're going to insert. And then right after the string, you call dot format. And then inside of this, you're going to call the strings or variables that you want to insert into your string. Let's walk through lots of examples here. We're going to start with the most basic example, which is just saying this is a string, going to set open and close curly braces there. And right after the string, we're going to call dot format. So notice how the dot is touching the string there. And then whatever string you want to insert. So to make it really obvious, I'm going to go put in all caps inserted. Run this, and now I see this is a string inserted. So what the dot format method has done is it's grabbed this string and inserted it where it saw those curly braces. So there's several advantages here, and we're gonna go through all of them. One advantage is that strings can actually be inserted by index position. Let's imagine that we want to insert many things. We're going to say the curly braces, curly braces, curly braces, then say dot format, and say the fox, brown, quick. Now what happens is basically dot .format is going to insert these strings in the same order you supplied them and into these curly braces. So right now we have the fox brown quick. What would be nice is if we actually have this make grammatical sense, which is going to be the quick brown fox. What we can do is based off the index position inside of this format call, I can supply those numbers in the order I want. So the very first word I want is actually quick. So this is at index position two because it's zero, one, two. So I'm going to say, okay, two goes first here. And then the next word I want is going to be brown. So that's at position one, so zero, one. And then the first word, fox, at index zero here is going to be the last one I want. And then when I run this, I get back the quick brown fox. What's also really nice is I can actually repeat these. So if I wanted to say the fox, 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 I could just say, the zero, zero, zero here, run this, and now I have the fox, fox, fox. So I can play around with this in case I ever want to uh, work based off of index position. Now what's also nice is that not only can I call things off the index position, I can also assign them keywords and then just call the keywords. Because here, as I'm working with this, there's no real indication that zero is fox. Instead, I just have to look over here and say, okay, what was the first word? What I can do is assign them keywords. So let's do this. We're going to say the curly braces, curly braces, curly braces, say dot format. And then inside of the dot format call, I'm going to say F is equal to the string Fox. So you can kind of think of this as a variable assignment. And then we'll say B is equal to Brown. And we'll say Q is equal to quick. And then I can use these variable names here, F, B, and Q, to insert them. So it's basically using these keywords as variable names here and inserting them that way. So inside of this, I'm going to say the Q B F. And then when I run this, I get back the quick brown fox. And this is even nicer than previously because it's a little more readable to someone using it like, oh, okay, Q stands for quick, instead of having to look back and ask yourself, okay, well, what was index position two? And then coming over here to format. So this is able to use these keywords, and I actually really prefer it this way myself. And what's also really nice about this, if again, for some reason, you wanted to say 
the fox, 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 you could just type in F here into each of these braces and you would get back the fox, fox, fox. So again, using keywords, you can use repetition easily. Okay, to finish off our discussion of the dot format method, I want to briefly talk about float formatting with the dot format method. And basically this allows you to adjust the width and precision of your floating point number. Let's start with an example. We're going to say result is equal to 100 divided by 777. So as you may expect, this result is a number with a ton of decimal points after it. What we can do is we can actually, when we're printing this out, change the level of precision we want and even change the width of the number itself. So we're going to start off by saying print, the result was, and then open and close curly braces, say dot format, and then here we'll say result, run this, and we see the result was, and it's basically this kind of large precision number. What I can also do is say r is equal to result, and then pass in an r inside these curly braces, and I get back the same result. So the way the formatting works for float formatting, as far as the dot format method, is you pass in the value that you're referring to. So in that case, it's r here, that's the actual value name. Then you write a colon, and then you write in the width value you want, dot, and then the precision value you want, and then an f. And often what you're really going to care about is the actual precision. The width just allows you to kind of add in some white space if you have a really large width value. So let's do the following. We're gonna say value, so that's r colon. We're going to set our width just equal to one, then a dot, and then the level of precision we want. So this is mainly what you're going to be playing around with, this precision value. Let's imagine I only want three places past the decimal point. So I want one, two, and then nine, because eight's gonna be rounded up to nine due to the seven right next to it. Then I would say 1.3 F, I run this, and I get back, 0.129. Now, if I play around with this width value and make it really large, what ends up happening is you end up adding white space. And the reason for that is because the width basically describes how long or how wide you want this entire string number to be. That's not terribly useful because you end up writing a ton of white space, but there may be certain situations where you kind of want to edit that. So it is available to you here, but often what you're going to be playing around with is really the, pre the precision here. So we can make this five, and here we can see now we're taking up less of the total width because with white space, because we have more numbers past the decimal point. And you can just generally keep it as one, but let's go ahead and show you another example. We're going to say result is equal to, let's say 104.12345, run that. And we can see here that even with one on the other side of the decimal point, that's essentially just the same thing, and we can edit around and play with this floating point value. Okay, so that's float formatting with the dot format method. Again, it's the value, your width, and really your precision followed by F. And you can check out the notebook for a lot more examples on this. Finally, what we're going to talk about is F strings, and these are formatted string literals. These were introduced in Python 3.6, so they're still very new, and they offer several benefits over this older dot format method. I generally prefer the dot format method, but a lot of people prefer this string literal method, especially if they're coming in from other languages. And what it allows you to do is basically skip this step of using dot format and instead write result or the whatever variable name you want directly inside the string. So the way we do that is the following method. I'm going to create a couple new cells here. I'm going to say name is equal to Jose, run that, and then Typically what I would have to do is say, hello, his name is, and then I would say dot format name. I run this and it says, hello, his name is Jose. What you can do is replace the dot format call by just typing an F in front of the string here, and then you can pass in name directly into the string itself. And if you run this, you get back the same result. So this is called F strings or formatted string literals. And this is new with Python 3.6. And a lot of people have been requesting this feature for a long time because it's quite common in other languages. Again, because I'm a little more old school, I got really used to this format method, which is why I like it so much. But if you're coming in from other languages, I would definitely suggest you check out the F strings. A lot of people think it's a huge improvement over the previous method. And you can see why it's actually really convenient to just be able to write 
that variable name directly inside these curly braces. And this works with multiple variables. So let's say name is Sam, age is three. What we can do is say print f to let Python know it's a f string. We'll say in curly braces, name is in curly braces age, years old. And if we run this, we see Sam is three years old. So this is a really nice way to very quickly do string interpolation, which is just injecting these variables into the string itself. Okay, those are the very basics of string formatting. We have a lot more examples in the notebook in case you're interested. And we also have examples of some older string formatting methods that technically still work in Python 3. But I would really recommend that you either use the dot format method, or if you like this new fstring method, use that as well. I'm going to briefly just show you what the notebook looks like for this lecture. So you can see here, we have a ton of string formatting uh, in examples for you, formatting with placeholders, which is something we didn't talk about this video lecture because it's quite an older method and I wouldn't really suggest you use it. But you can also see how we can use precision and padding for floating point numbers. We also have a lot more examples with the dot format method, inserting objects by index position, reusing them. We also have alignments, precision. So all this stuff, a lot of this stuff we're not really going to use throughout the course, but it is available to you in the notebook in case you want to dive really deep into this topic. So we have lots of examples for you there. Okay. Again, all you really need to know about string formatting for this course is that you can use fstring literals to inject and interpolate strings this way, or you can use the dot format method to inject variables that way. Okay, hope that was useful to you. We'll see you in the next lecture.